She was described as having some sort of a mental episode. The mother made a decision to take her up to the hospital to have her checked. The mother and daughter that brought her there left, leaving Rory in the care of the hospital. For whatever reason, she ended up leaving before she was actually seen by a physician. We see her exiting uh, the hospital on her own. That was the last known sighting we had of her. Communications. I'm a plumber and I'm on site for uh, a job. And we've got, uh, we're, we're snaking a drain. And we were, uh, we've been pulling back, uh, we probably pulled back about 10 pounds, 15 pounds of like, it looks like flesh type of stuff, meat, and I don't, we don't know what it is. The issue started several days before. He didn't want any plumbers called. Um, he tried snaking the drain himself. Uh, he was taking efforts to, to fix it. Uh, by the 29th, it, it was getting so bad. Uh, the smell, uh, the pipes were backing up into the people's uh, bathtubs. People upstairs just took it upon themselves to call a plumber. The officers on the scene decided to knock on the door of Adam Strong's basement apartment. They recall him putting his head down and making a comment almost instantaneously that uh, the jig's up, uh, it's a body. He commented to the arresting officer if um, if you want the rest of her, she's in my freezer, and she's pretty defleshed. And uh, there, was, in fact, was somebody in the freezer, as Adam said. Rory had a distinct tattoo. She had the word alive tattooed on her neck. And when they looked through the freezer, they found uh, a human head and there was a tattoo uh, clearly displayed. I knew right then, yeah, it's, it's Rory. We didn't know at that point what the cause of death was. To lay that charge, you, you need the grounds. The decision was made to continue our investigation to see where it took us down the road. Three hours of doing it, it was clear we weren't going to get anywhere. We were just going in circles. Obviously, you don't care enough to help. Are the tissues often needed? Why, do you want some? No, no, I'm good. Yeah. Let's just shut it down now. We could have sat there for another three or six hours. I don't think we were going to get any different results. Right, um, well, you know what? We'll, uh, we'll walk you back.
really all I got from that interview was a sense of, of who Adam was to help us go into further down the road with the investigation. It was the worst apartment I've ever been in for clutter and dirt and mess. You could barely move uh, because of a few little walkways in there. There was a number of sex toys located in the apartment, restraining devices, handcuffs and whatnot. There was a bent hammer we had located Roy's DNA on. Rory's running shoes were located in a bag in the apartment. There was blood spatter located on the wall and bottom baseboards leading into Adam's bedroom. That knife's only designed for one use and one use only. It's a knife used for, by hunters for gutting and skinning animals. To a logical person, it doesn't make sense. You keep all that evidence around, but it seemed to be the way Adam thought. The DNA that was located on that knife, it, was, it wasn't through blood. It was tissue-like material. We sent that knife off for analysis. We received the results back. That knife contained the DNA uh, of a second female. The second victim uh, was a 19-year-old female who went missing in 2008. And uh, very much like Rory, she um, was out of the house uh, on her own. Both victims were in their late teens, and both victims were uh, more of a petite build, longer, you know, brown hair. Almost a splitting image of each other. She went missing 10 years prior, and Adam when undetected for 10 years, it makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. I certainly felt some pressure. The reality is if there was no conviction and he was a free man. certainly checked into how he had been treated thus far. That's important. Uh, uh, speaks towards admissibility. Addressed any needs that he had, and he said he hadn't eaten, so we took care of that. I certainly knew we couldn't rush into talking to Adam about the case, given the fact how it went with uh, the two detectives back in December of 2017 sharing a meal with somebody, breaking bread with somebody. It's a chance to bond and talk. And then once um, that had gone on for an hour and a half or so, I started to talk about the case a little bit. Um, how old was Rory? 18. Okay, how much of her body did you guys get back? Obviously the entire skeletal structure, right? Well, we obviously, whatever was in the house. Yes, we, we in the freezer. It. Yes. And. How much of it were you able to pull out of the pipes? Uh, quite a bit. It was, it was bad luck. Yeah, that's what I tell people. They're like, you're stupid. I'm like, you kidding me? Well. That's an awesome way. Yeah. I just, I just got greedy, that's all. Paul, importantly, doesn't react to what most people would perhaps react to, which is, a, you know, again, a rather shocking thing to say. Every time there was a little bit of information given to me, maybe even unknowingly by Adam Strong, Inside, I was giving myself a little fist pump, only because I thought we were advancing the case a little bit here. So, the 24th is when you start this. You said Christmas Eve? Yes. Are you, are you doing this while it's frozen or just partially defrosted? Completely defrosted. Okay. Now that would take several hours, wouldn't it? Uh, no, not a bathtub full of hot water. Oh, okay. Okay. It, like, Within a couple hours. I wouldn't wager. I had to fill the bathtub.
I've helped a few times on the Keep the water hot. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. I don't know if I should really be talking about that, but ultimately you do have me on the... Yeah. There's no getting around that. Yep. Yep. He thinks, and they are, only talking about dismemberment and disposal, but in fact it's allowing, the, in this case, the judge ultimately to make inferences about what must have happened during the actual murders that took place. All right, well, I'm gonna blast. Man, go get some sleep, dude. Listen, I appreciate you sticking it out. Well, you sure. sure. really have a choice. No, but... Uh, I probably said more than I should have. Probably, yeah, probably. The judge watched the entire 12-hour interview, went through it, and the ruling came back quite clearly that uh, Strong was well taken care of, he seemed comfortable, his needs were all met, there was no trickery, there was no oppression. This was essentially a slam dunk in terms of miscibility, which is rare for a 12-hour interview. Adam was convicted of first-degree murder on Rory and ultimately convicted of manslaughter uh, on the second victim. Detective Mitten uh, and the investigative team got a first-degree murder charge and a manslaughter with no confession. There definitely was a danger. They pulled the indignity, so it, if things went south in that interview room, I, I, he, may, he may have walked. That would have been a travesty. It's really tough to describe Adam Strong. I have never met an individual like him. It was a, it was a tough investigation, but we, we speak for the victims. We're trying to bring them justice and, and, and give the family answers. The sentence he was given is the maximum sentence you can receive in this country. So yes, I feel justice was served.